Hello, hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Soul Centered CEO Show featuring my dear friend, Jackie McDonald. Welcome, Jackie. Welcome, welcome everyone. So excited to have you with us for this week's episode of the Soul Centered CEO Show featuring the beautiful and magical Jackie McDonald. Welcome, Jackie. Uh, Thank you so much for having me, Haley. I'm so excited to dive into this conversation with you. And I know this is our first chat live, really. We just, I was like, how is this possible that it's been, um, it's been on my list for a long time, but we're just now getting together. And for those of you that are new uh, to Jackie and don't know of her magical work, I want to just share a little bit of her of her background. She is passionate about teaching sensitive and ambitious women how to use their gifts intuitively, avoid burnout, and achieve success with soul. She's an EFT practitioner, speaker, and leader to sensitive and successful women. Her journey with EFT started after losing five close friends within a few months of having her daughter and tapping has allowed you to really become and be who you are now. And now you're sharing your very own method of EFT tapping called the McDonald manifestation method, um, where you're getting tapping into the hands, hearts and homes of people all over the world. That's so wonderful. So exciting. And it's so good to have you, Jackie. I know that, you know, I've watched, um, I've just watched your beautiful growth and expansion over these last, probably I'd say six to nine months, really. I mean, we spent some time together in January. In yeah. Mexico, and you had at that point, just some really big and beautiful dreams. I remember. Mm-hmm. And it's just been so lovely to watch all of that and more really come to fruition. So I would love for our listeners to be able to kind of get a sense of, of what magic has unfolded for you this year. And so um, maybe we can start with you sharing a little bit about, um, you know, how you created your own method. I know you had an extraordinary and really beautiful expansion um, financially this year. I think just sharing a little bit of that would be beautiful because I think it's always fun to hear people's stories yeah. winning and overcoming and, and gives us hope for what's possible. So would you want to just dive in there and share a little bit of your journey with us? I'd love to. Yes. Thank you. So I think that what they say is true that there's 10 years behind overnight success. And I, so I found tapping, I always say tapping found me at my worst and brought me to my best. Mm-hmm. Um, so found me about eight years ago. And, um, like I mentioned, you mentioned in my bio, I had just had a baby. I was 19, just had a baby and had five deaths back to back right after she was born. Uh, So it put my whole body into a state of fight or flight. I was living life as if like, who is going to die next? Because there was a lot of uncertainty. And um, that's when tapping came into my life. And for me, it was a, a body experience. My body was experiencing really weird symptoms that the doctors were just like, you're a tired new mom. We can't really figure it out. Um, But after tapping on it, I had a two hour session. I released a lot of grief, a lot of anxiety, and my body started to go into that rest repose mode and got better. So I was like, there's something to this. I devoted nine months to studying and training in it. And then for the past eight years, I have practiced it diligently personally and then with other people. So all of that leading up to this year, um, I'd say the last two years, but almost three years ago, I left a, a long-term relationship and started you know, building my life my way. Mm -hmm. and uh tapping was the thing that got me through the really hard moments of not knowing how I was gonna pull everything off I mean my business was a baby my baby was a baby I was young and it gave me a tool it gave me my power and so this year I you know I've had a few things that I've been doing consistently which I think in business we hear a lot one of them was the 21 days of tapping I started it three years ago this March Mm -hmm. and 
a $21 program that would bring hundreds of people through. And from there I developed um, my method because people are like tapping. I've tried tapping before, but tapping with you is different. Mm -hmm. So I really started to study my method and the intention behind um, my tapping is really to help people get where they want to go. Um, and tapping is traditionally a trauma technique. It's, it's used in, um, with veterans, it's used for PTSD, but it can also be used to accelerate and elevate your life. So that's what I started using it for and it started working and then it started working for others. And so this year I put out my first, um, tapping training program. Yep. And that's where I had this big launch. So I think it's a combination between, you know, diligently doing your work, um, mm-hmm showing up and then having a power team. Like I allowed myself to be really supported this year. And as a single mom, the mentality is often I can do it myself, but I really broke through and was like, no, I'm going to set myself up for success. And part of that was surrounding myself with the people to help me hit my goals. Yeah. And that's so beautiful because I think, especially as moms, but I think a lot of women in general are very much like, I can do it myself. You know, I, you know, I'm independent. I'm on my own. And, and we've been um, kind of raised to believe or are taught to believe that that's, that's the only way, or that's the brave and courageous way. Right. When in reality, I, I think that this new way of doing business that, that we're kind of part of this kind of movement is what I would suggest. And that what we're creating with this soul centered CEO community and collective is that, we don't have to do it alone. Like we are no longer required to heavy lift all by ourselves, right? And I think it was so beautiful for me to watch your example of going through it in a different way, right? It can be easy, it can be lovely, it can be spacious, it can be so much fun and you can make more revenue by doing exactly what you're born to do. Mm-hmm. in a much shorter period of time. And it feels amazing, expansive the whole entire way. I also think that there's that win, win, win mentality, because when we allow ourselves to be supported, it's really rewarding for the people on our team. And I know one of my dreams has always been to pay the people that I love to work with me. And that has come true as I grow. And so, um, you know, it's a win for me because I'm hitting my goals. It's a win for them because they are part of a vision. And then it's a win for the people who are buying from you and learning from you. And I, I really started to understand that one person is a whole network. And we hear that business is all about relationships and something that is like, I've just grown into myself, but also grown into relationships and really invested in people that pays off. Yeah. Yeah. And I really um, believe that that's the next, that's the next iteration of life and business is the deepening of the relationships and the connections and collaborations, because, you know, when one of us rises, we all rise. Right. And I think by allowing ourselves to be fully supported and to to have people believe in us, you know, is such a beautiful thing. And a lot of times people want to support you. They're just not sure how. So I really love the idea of this partnership, kind of this model or this vibe of like, hey, let me help you, right? There's going to be a thing that I'm going to do in a few months or six months or next year. And I'm, I would love your support. Yeah. And it's just this very yeah. easy and lovely way of showing up for each other. Um, And like you said, it creates a win-win-win. It creates a beautiful opportunity to to share each other's work and share each other's passion and mission um, with our own communities and uh, maybe get eyeballs on on the work that you're doing that may not have been able to be there before. So I think it's really lovely. And I feel like um, now more than ever, we we need a, a deepening of those relationships and those connections because we are isolated, you know, a lot of us now, especially since we can't travel as easily as possible, you know, as we, as we used to. So I love that you've been able to really leverage those relationships in a very beautiful and receptive and very feminine way, right? It's, it's, it's the heart without the hustle is what it feels to me like, you know, and I think that's a really cool way to do it. It's interesting. It's interesting go into relationships in business and you don't like, I never, I never thought like, Oh, one day this is going to come back around and support me. I just naturally love on people and want to know people and be a part of their world. And Mm -hmm. when there's those moments in a launch where you need, like, 
I believe in, you know, building up your beliefs. So we talk a lot about limiting beliefs and tapping, but also installing and building your new beliefs. But sometimes we need people to bring an infusion of belief. And I think when you're going through a big launch or doing something in the world like that, that's, I hired people to, to believe in me literally when I was like tired or didn't know if I was going to do it or just like, this is good enough to be like, Jackie, I know that you can do more. I believe in you. Gives you that last big boost that can just like put you over the line into your dreams. But you know, that's so, that's such a lovely way to think about it because, um, it is hard as entrepreneurs, like we're on our own most of the time, you know, I'm literally by myself most of the time. Um, now I have my puppy, but yeah, it's, it's hard to keep that energy and that momentum up all by yourself. So I think it's beautiful that you're like, I'm calling in the troops, right? And they do believe in you and they love you and they want to encourage you and support you. And so I think it's really, um, it's a wonderful example of what is possible when we give ourselves permission to, um, to welcome in that support and to nourish those connections in that community and allow them to, to be the buoys sometimes when we start to feel a little wonky or a little unstable. They're like, no, you've got this, you know? It takes a village to make magic, it really does. And so I love that you've been able to create that in your own life and in your own business and how cool that now it feels like just the beginning. Like, you know, I know if you've been in it for 10 years, but like you said, that overnight success 10 years later, you know, which is so true. Um, it's beautiful to see the, um, the fruits of your efforts and your labor and your consistency and your passion. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And between, uh, enrolling people in your vision. So the people that were on my team knew that my dream is to get tapping into the hands, hearts, and homes of people all over the world in different languages and different walks of life. Yeah has been really cool because that people that have signed up for my program, you know, they're teaching it in Spanish they're teaching it in Greek. Like there's different languages that are translating this work in the world and helping people feel empowered emotionally. And so that was one part of it is really having um, a team that has your vision and is like, yeah. yes, seeing that we can get this into the hands, hearts and homes of people everywhere, but then also understanding your strengths and weaknesses. So I'm a really great visionary. I'm really great at delivering my content, enrolling people in a vision, making them feel something. But when it comes to the little details of writing emails or whatever it might be, uh, or setting up sales pages, I, it, it's slows down your growth if you try to do it all yourself. And so I know money is a big conversation with entrepreneurs and sometimes you do got to put out money before you have it. That's just the reality. That was reality for me as a single mom. I had to have a lot of faith in myself, in my vision and in the people that I was working with, but it, it totally paid off. So I think that if people are listening that, you know, if you've been working diligently on something and you're not scaling, it, it does have to do with how supported you are and how willing you are to allow yourself to uh, say yes to bringing more hands on deck. Right. And I think that's such a great point of not feeling like you have to do it all by yourself. Like all, you don't have to wear all the hats, right? Like really being able to, to focus on your zone of genius and pour into that. I don't know about you, but when I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, like, and only that, that's when the brilliance, that's when the magic, that's when the ease and the flow comes. When I'm trying to do like spreadsheets and detail oriented stuff, that's just not my jam. And it like clogs up the whole system, right? So I agree. I think creating a, a hybrid of a team that can help you really let you focus on exactly what you're supposed to be doing and they can support with their brilliance. I mean, that's the beautiful part, you know, is that we all have different gifts. And as long as you surround your pe- yourself with people that have different ones than you, um, that's leadership though, right? That's how, that's what you do when you're a good leader is surround yourself with people that have different strengths. And it's thinking and acting like a CEO. I mean, I know that's the, na- the name of your show is like CEOs have a team. Like they have exactly. you know, a whole team that does things for them and, and they need that in order to stay on the uh-huh. top. So Exactly. Exactly. And now, you know, with this movement that we're creating, it's all about helping, you know, people that are at a six figure business model, create their million dollar business model, knowing that when we all collectively make more, we can give more like that's ultimately, like you talk about your big vision is to get tapping into the hearts and homes of the masses, right? 
it's like, I want so many more people to be making so much more money. Not that we can, so we can buy more stuff. I mean, not like that's a bad thing. Cause you know, we got to have some stuff, but really with the intention that we can make a huge impact and leave a legacy by, by making millions so we can give millions mm. over time. And that feels really exciting to me, you know? So it's so exciting to have you kind of in that, already in that model of what it looks like, you know? That, not, that's why these conversations are so fun to me. Cause I'm like, you're already doing it. You've already, you've already outlined a step of this, this CEO model in my opinion is that you get the right team support and then you surround yourself with the community and the collaboration in order to help lift you to that next level. And then the next time we're all in it together and we lift you to the next level. And that's, we just take turns doing that for everyone. I think it's so fun to think about it that way instead of, well, we've all got to do our own thing and I have to be here by myself. And it's just not that way anymore. No, and, and speaking of thinking like a CEO, imagine you had a million dollars to give away. Oh. What would you do with that? And that's the energy that will pull you into action, right? Because it's like, you know, giving some momentum behind your money and, and you know, using those goals to drive you. Like, I don't know what your vision is, but I'd, I'd love to hear, like, where do you see yourself giving that money to? Yeah, so we've actually got a couple of partners already in mind. Um, and, and it's interesting because one of the, one of the real inspirations around this collective that we're that we're creating is um, an organization called Together Rising, and it's one that Glennon Doyle created several years ago. And what I watched over time was that when there was a moment of need in the world, or or in a, in a way that people needed to show up together, she was able to bring them together with a with one linear focus and create massive impact and change. And I just loved that so much. And I thought, you know what, why can't we do that? Why can't we as a, as a business community, as a collective create something similar to that, that way we can, um, we can have a vision beyond the vision of just more revenue. Cause for me, that's never been enough. I, I always have to have it linked to like, what am I going to create with that? Or where is that going to go? Right. Money likes a path, doesn't it? Um, so, so we're going to be focused on working with them. And then the other organization that we have right now lined up is uh, charity water. You know, that's another group that I've just watched over time that has done such extraordinary things. And I love how those organizations are almost funded independently. And so the donations that are gifted are not used like 90% for admin, you know, that kind of thing just makes me crazy. So, um, so those are the first two that we're going to focus on, obviously being open to, to whatever else um, unfolds and arises. But, but I feel like those two are very much in alignment with the vision of more of a grassroots kind of vibe. Like we really get our hands dirty and help people like in the mix. Right. And uh, so, yeah, those are two that, that we're going to start with. Love it. Those are two I already donate to, so I'm on board. Really? Well, how perfect is that? Yeah. Um, the other thing I'm really good at is transparency. It's really important to me that, um, that that's a real big part of this as well. And so I want to make sure that the reporting is available. It's very clear where money's going, just so that way there's no, um, there's no concern around that. It's, a, it's clean, it's clear, it's transparent, and that feels really good too. And so both of those do really well. So I love that you're already giving to them. That's so perfect. Yeah. That's cool. That's yeah. very cool. So, so anyway, okay. So now that we've gone through this beautiful transformation that you've been in this year, what do you feel like is going to be next for you? What else are you calling in? What, what else is coming other than the a greater expansion? I'm, I'm assuming of what you're already doing. Yeah, I think, well, what became clear for me, like talking about building sort of million dollar brands is that it takes so it takes a while to experiment and figure out what your thing is, right? And that's a big part of the entrepreneurial journey at the beginning is letting it be an experiment and not being hard on yourself when it's you haven't landed yet. But now that I've landed in there's these three things I'm really good at. You know, it's the 21 days of tapping, it's my wildly wealthy woman membership, and it's my training program. So now my focus is to even, even spend even more time building those out. So I have a team in my training program and building them out and, and becoming really masterful at a few things instead of sort of 
trying to, you know, throw paint at the wall and try it all because yeah. people will present you with really great ideas too. Like well, you should do this, you should do that. But for me, focus is the number one word. Yep. Focus on doing a few things well and scaling it. And um, yeah, also thinking about how I can contribute and give back. Like, how do I make this more accessible for me um, in the coaching world? I've always made my programs really affordable and mm -hmm. that's just been my mentality. I'd rather reach more people sure. um, and make it more affordable. So that's, that's top of mind for me is how do I get, how do I get this into more hands, hearts, and homes? Mm -hmm. The work that I'm fo is focused for me, really focusing on knowing what's working and doing it well and bringing mm -hmm. even more team members in to, to help scale and being okay with paying them. It's like, you know, yeah. as you grow, your team grows and sure you're making more money, but you're spending more money. And so having, um, yeah, I have a CFO now that she takes care of all that. And we're strategically planning out how to, to bring it to a million dollars. <laughs> Fabulous, darling. Well, I love it. I love how you have just allowed yourself to receive and expand in such beautiful and extraordinary ways. I love that you've just really, you are what I would consider the embodiment of a soul center CEO. You have such a heart for service and such a big vision for what's possible. You know, those are two, those are two really key components of this is that it's, um, you know, you have to be able to see it because if you can't see the vision for what's available to you, then, then obviously it's going to be a lot more challenging to ever get there. And then also having that heart to, to give, you know, I think that's a really beautiful part of, of you uh, as a person as, and as your work in the world. So um, it's such an honor to have you on this journey with me in my life, in my circle. It's been such a blessing. And, and I do hope that we're able to spend um, time together in real life soon, soon, because that would be fantastic as well. So we've seen each other twice this year. We met for the first time in January in San Diego. Then you came and hung out at my retreat with us in, yep, in I know. February. In February. Yeah. 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 That was a divine appointment, wasn't it? Yeah. Just quickly planned, just lined up nicely. And there's no doubt we're soul sisters and that we're going to do big things in the yeah. world. And I'm just honored to be, to be here with you all and to support your vision. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing just your story, you know, around just what you allowed in this year. It's just really beautiful to see how quickly things can, can amp up and, and amplify when you allow yourself to really, I would say, amplify your visibility to amplify your impact, right? Yeah. yeah. Make the decision, make the moves, start before you're ready. It's going to be a hold your breath moment. But then I always, so my core philosophy is release to receive. And yeah, so I've done a lot of releasing in the past few years. And then it's when it's go time, it's time to say yes to yourself and believe in yourself and let people help you. But also yeah. let it be so fun because the biggest feedback I had on my launch was how much fun I had. People were like, Jackie, you changed the rules around launching. And we get to create our rules in our business in our life. And um, yeah, I believe that you don't have to hustle hard. I mean, I did hustle. I put in a lot of work, but I played a lot at the same time and it kept my vibration and energy up. And uh, I was unattached to what happened. I just trusted and knew that whatever happened was working out for my highest good. And yeah. I'm excited to share that in this collective. Yeah. It's beautiful. Wonderful, darling. Thank you so much. I appreciate, um, appreciate you being here. And um, I appreciate just the work that you're doing in the world. I think EFT is an extraordinary tool. And I love your vision for getting it into more hands and hearts and homes. And I'm committed to helping you do that in whatever way I can as well. So just know that, that uh, I'm on your team, darling. I'm on your team. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you all for tuning in this week. We're so excited to um, have you dive into this episode and hope you'll join us again for next week's episode of the Soul Center CEO Show.